Hi folks, and welcome to Intermediate Bird Identification. I'm Leanne Lachemoy from Birds Canada here in Saskatoon. This video is made in part to support participation in the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas, a citizen science project that aims to determine the status and distribution of birds that nest across the province. With that, let's get started. So in this video, we're gonna be covering blackbirds and starlings. And contrary to what the beetles may have told you, these birds don't necessarily like to sing at night, though sometimes they do. Um, the focus will be on birds that nest here in Saskatchewan, but many of these species can be found across the prairies and indeed in the much of rest of Canada too. All right, so blackbirds. These are medium to largest songbirds. They have relatively long conical bills, so those, you know, kind of cone-shaped bills that you can see represented on all of these species here. Um, and females are usually brownish, so the species do differ for the most part between the sexes. First off, let's take a look at the western meadowlark. So this is a large blackbird, which is not actually black. Um, it's got a short tail and it's rather football shaped in flight. So as you see it going by, it kind of looks like a like a, if a football was um, cut in half lengthwise. It's that very even um, kind of tapered shape to it. It's got a bold black V on a yellow belly, so you can see that really, really nice um, V marking on its chest here. And its upper parts are streaked and mottled with brown. It does have nice white outer tail feathers, which is really helpful for identification uh, in flight. But again, that really kind of football shaped um, shape in flight is rather helpful. You're going to find this bird commonly in rangelands and in farmlands. Next up we've got the bobolink. This is a small blackbird. It's got a smaller more sparrow-like bill but it's still got that cone shaped to it. It's a little bit longer than what you would see in sparrows and it's actually got kind of these really lovely pointed tail feathers that obviously is hard to see if you don't have the bird right up close next to you. The males are black overall with a straw colored nape and so that's that back portion of the head here. And it's also got a white rump located on its backside here, as well as a white wing patch. So it's quite um, quite the colorful blackbird. Females, on the other hand, are buffy yellow, so it's kind of like a cream straw color. And they've got a mostly plain breast and a bit of a dark eye line. So it's definitely easy to confuse these birds um, with sparrows, but you're looking for that kind of slightly longer cone-shaped bill and there's nothing on the breast and belly here and it's kind of very, very buffy yellow overall. Um, it's found in wet meadows and it makes noises like R2-D2. Next up, we've got the yellow-headed blackbird. How's that for a descriptive name, hey? So this is a medium-sized blackbird, and males are black with a bright yellow head and breast, as well as a nice white wing patch. Otherwise, they're solid black. Females are uniform brown with fainter yellow markings on the face and breast. So that's a female down here. And again, both of those species have that same kind of long cone-shaped bill. You'll find this bird um, commonly in deeper water wetlands with cattails and bulrush where it is um, kind of loosely colonial, so you'll often find them in um, large groupings. Another aptly named bird is the red-winged blackbird. This is a medium-sized blackbird and the male is black overall with the exception of its red and yellow shoulder patches. So. Um, really, really stands out that red marking. But depending on sometimes the way the bird is holding its feathers and its wings, some of that red and yellow can be a fair bit obscured. Um, and so don't worry if maybe you don't see the yellow on it. Um, sometimes those can just be hidden under other feathers depending on the way it's holding itself. Um, the females are coarsely streaked brown all over and they have a bit of an orange wash to the face and you can see there's a nice dark eye line through the eye there. But again, have that kind of long cone-shaped bill that's very very um, similar to the males right here pretty much identical so 
taking a look at those birds, you're often going to see them um, hanging out together, the males and females. So it's a great way to learn the female of a species is to first get familiar with um, the look and shape of the male and then look for um, a similar drab bird nearby. These guys are ubiquitous in wet, brushy, and marshy habitat. So anywhere that look like it might have a bit of water or moisture, you're likely to find a red-winged blackbird hanging out. Next up, we've got the brown-headed cowbird. This is another small blackbird. It's got a relatively short bill and short tail. Males and females do differ. So males are black with a blue-green iridescence overall and a brown head. Females are pale brown overall, almost gray, and they've got a little bit of faint streaking on the breast. It's a little bit blurred out. Um, and these birds don't actually build their own nest. They lay the eggs in the nests of other birds. And so males will gather around and display for a female and she'll eventually choose one to mate with. And then she will go and deposit those eggs in the nest of a unsuspecting um, host species. And you'll find these birds commonly in open habitats, especially around cattle. Next up, we've got the Brewer's Blackbird. This is a medium-sized blackbird. Um, the males are black and glossy overall, and they've got a pale yellow eye. So that eye really, really stands out on that kind of black background. Females are plain drab gray-brown, but that breast is unstreaked. So remember how there's a little bit of blurry streaking that was going on on the female cowbird? Well, you're lacking that same kind of blurry streakiness on the female Brewer's Blackbird. Um, you'll find these birds in open and brushy habitats and in towns as well as cities. So this is kind of a, you know, a finely portioned blackbird. It's very, um, it's very, you know, delicate looking compared to the next species we're going to compare it to, which is the common grackle. This is a large blackbird. It's got a long, heavy bill. We're still in that realm of cone-shaped bills, but it, this one is much larger and heavier. And it's got this long, keeled tail, so it kind of droops down like the keel of a boat. Um, so you'll see this nice, hanging, nice tail hanging down in flight like that. Males have a bronzy sheen to their body, and they have a quite iridescent blue head, and these ones also do have a pale eye. The female is less iridescent overall, and this, this is going to depend on the female, so they tend to be more, more brownish, less bronzy, but they do have some iridescence. And you'll find these birds um, across much of the province in shelter belts, farmyards, and cities and forests as well. So comparing the two Brewer's Blackbird and Common Grackle side by side, so the Brewer's Blackbird is going to have a relatively short tail, and the Common Grackle is going to have that long, heavy, keeled tail that really droops and hangs down. It's much larger and droopier in the males, but the females do also have a long tail as well. Um, <clears throat> it's going to have a fine, delicate bill, and the male of the Common Grackle, or both sexes, are going to have a much heavier bill as well. And the Brewer's Blackbird, that glossy black sheen overall that covers um, the entirety of the body, whereas that iridescence is relegated only to the head in the common grackle, and it's got more of a bronzy colored body. And the Brewer's Blackbird is definitely got more delicate proportions, just a finer, less chunky bird. The common grackle definitely looks like a sturdy, rough and tumble bird. Comparing two similar looking females now, we've got the Brewer's Blackbird and the female brown-headed cowbird. So the female Brewer's Blackbird is going to have a finer, more pointed bill, and the brown-headed cowbird is going to have a shorter, more sparrow-like bill, so there is a difference in the bill shape there. Again, we're still in that realm of conical bills, but one is finer and more pointed, and the other is shorter and more sparrow-like. Um, the female Brewer's Blackbird is going to have a breast that is solid gray, whereas in the female brown-headed cowbird, you're going to have those fine blurry streaks on the breast. So that's those two similar females compared. Next up, we've got a really flashy looking blackbird, and this is our Baltimore Oriole. This is a relatively small blackbird. It's got a long, fine bill, and the male is a striking black and highlighter orange with a black head. It's really a bird that you are, especially the males, you're not gonna mistake with anything else. There's nothing else that is quite that, that, you know, just grab ya orange colored. 
I've also got these nice white wing bars, which are more prominent in the males. The female is more of a dingy yellow-orange overall and has a bit of a weak eye line. They do develop bolder colorations as they age, as we can see in this female down here. So you can see that she's definitely looking more orangey and has some black streaking on the head. Um, you'll find these birds in small stands of aspens and shelter belts and riparian areas. And what's interesting is that they build these really intricate um, hanging woven nests. So if you're lucky, um, you might be able to see one of those hanging nests yourself. And another species of oriole that we have in the province that um, we're seeing more and more is the orchard oriole. This is another small blackbird. It's got a long, fine bill. And the adult males have a black back, tail, and hood. And they've got this really rusty colored body. So it's really, um, really gorgeous and not that bright highlighter orange of the Baltimore oriole. Females are yellow overall with a drab back and wings. Both of them do show that nice, lovely white wing bar. And interesting, first, interestingly, first summer males um, look a lot like females, but they have this black throat patch. And I was lucky enough to see all three of these um, myself uh, last summer, so that was quite exciting for me. And all of them show those white wing bars. And you'll find this bird in riparian areas, so areas close to water, especially rivers. And last but not least, we have the European starling. This is a medium-sized songbird. It's got a short square tail and triangular pointed wings, um, which give it really a, a jet fighter silhouette in, in flight, that really kind of triangular shape as it's flying. It's got dark iridescent plumage, and it's got white spots when the plumage is fresh, but those wear off um, for the breeding season. And so um, you might see the bird looking quite spiffy in its really spotted plumage, or you might see it um, later in the season as those white tips have worn off. But, you know, it's got this beautiful dark iridescent plumage. It almost looks like an oil slick. Um, these guys form really large flocks during mar migration called murmurations, and I suggest you go um, look one of those videos up because they're really incredible. And you'll find these commonly around humans, um, from cities all the way to agricultural landscapes. And this was a bird that was introduced in New York in the 1890s and has since um, made its way across a fair bit of North America. And with that, I'd like to say thanks for taking the time to watch this video. At Birds Canada, we're always happy to help you learn to identify birds and have citizen science programs for all skill levels. With our website, uh, visit our website at birdscanada.org or follow us on social media at Birds Canada to learn more or to get involved. If you have any questions or comments about the video, you can reach out to us at skatlas at birdscanada.org. And lastly, do check out the Saskatchewan Breeding Bird Atlas website at sk.birdatlas.ca and follow us on Facebook where we post links to upcoming workshops and other training opportunities. Thanks again and happy birding!